All right, here we are. We're about to multiply and divide radicals. So um, the parts of a radical, obviously like this part right here, that's called a radical. This number here is important. It's called the index, all right? So that's the type of radical, like square root, cube root, fourth root, things like that. Um, there's something inside the radical that's called the radican. Okay, so you don't hear that that much, but sometimes. All right, so you can only multiply or divide radicals with a matching index, all right? So when you multiply or divide radicals, you cannot put them together if the, um, the index doesn't match. So like these right here, you can't multiply these two radicals together. You can reduce each one, and then if their result does not have a radical, then you can multiply those things together. But like here, you see these are both square roots. So I can put these together and I can mush them together into one big square root, okay? Here, I can put these together. I have negative three, I put one big fourth root and then have all that stuff inside and then I reduce it and whatnot, okay? Here, I can divide these two things with each other. Like I can divide these right now, okay? Because they both have fourth roots. But in this case, a cube root and a square root, I can't do like a seven divided by a 10 right now or b10 and b4. I have to reduce this one and reduce this one and anything that's on the outside I can like work with, but these two things are kind of locked in place. All right, so let's see. <clears throat> um, this first one is just basic, has uh, just numbers, no variables. So they're both cube roots, so I'm gonna put them together into one big cube root. That's what you wanna do with radicals when you're multiplying and dividing. Reduce them first by multiplying or dividing them and then reduce your answer. Um, you don't want to like reduce each one separately. Like for instance, in this problem right here, I don't want to work on reducing this one and reducing that one and doing stuff because then when I put them together, I'm going to have more to reduce. So I want to put them together first. So it's like one big problem and then I don't have to reduce the radical as much because that's annoying. All right, so here we go. So we got cube root. This is negative eight. Remember, cube roots can handle negatives. The answer is just negative two. All right, here, we're gonna put it together first. I have one big square root. 12 times three is 36. X3 and X5 make X8. And Y and Y make Y squared. Now look at that. The square root of 36 is six. Two goes into eight four times, and two goes into two once, so it was a perfect square. On letter C, like I said, I can't put this together. I cannot put it together right now. So, um, because one's a square root and one's a cube root. Okay, so I have to work on this one and work on this one separately. So cube root of eight is two. Three goes into six twice. Three goes into the C12 uh, four times. Times, I get seven A squared B to the third over here. Oh, so everything worked out perfectly. So now I can put these together. So it's 14 A to the fourth, C to the seventh. Oh, whoops, sorry. Um, I was putting the C and the B together. They don't go together. So B3, C4. Okay. All right, over here, division. So when you have division, just like when we had multiplication, do the division first if you can. For instance, 256 and 16, those divide. 256 divided by 16 is 16. So first of all, this equals, um, this cancels out, and there's a 16 on top, right? So 16, and the fourth root is still there. Um, I'm going to put the fourth root in the bottom here, but I'm not sure if anything's there yet because right now this is just a 1. All right, look here. So x2 and x10, when you divide, you subtract your exponents. So 2 minus 10 is negative 8. So that tells me I have 8 x to the 8th on the denominator. Whoa, oh, what happened here? So I have x to the 8th. All right, so basically, um, you know, two of these cancels out with two of those, leaving you 8, right? Um, and then here, y10 and y3, I subtract, I get y to the seventh. All right, so now I have two separate problems. So basically, I look at the bottom and look at the top. Four goes into eight on the bottom and it makes x squared. And on the top, the four through to 16 is two, because two times two times two times two makes 16. And four goes into seven once with three left over. So fourth root of y to the third. So, you know, it's ugly, but whatever. <laughs> All right, on letter E. So all I have hopes to do here is to reduce each one of these. So I'm going to do that. So it's like annoying because I have two problems basically to do. So on the bottom, square root of 36 is 6. 2 goes into a 10, 5, and then b2. So that all came out nicely. Now up here, uh, 40. 40 is 8 times 5. And I picked 8 because it's a perfect cube. So that's going to come out and be a 2 with a 5 left inside. So 2 times a 4 outside is 8 
leave some space, put my cube root back and put a five back in. Three goes into seven twice with one left. And three goes into 10 uh, three times. So B three with one left. Okay, so now um, the cube root's done. There's nothing, there's no cube root on the bottom, but these pieces out here, this piece and this stuff can be put together. Like I can like divide those. All right, so this cube root is finished. Let's work on the outside. Eight and six reduced to four and three. I have A2 and A5, it makes A3 on the bottom. And B3 and B2 makes a B on top. And that is it. All right. So over here, um, I have multiplication. I have fourth roots. So like I said, put it all together. So I have negative three on the outside. I have one big fourth root. Um, eight times six is 48. Uh, A8 and A3, A11, B11 also. Okay, so 48, a good fourth root. Now back here we saw 16 was a perfect fourth root, back on letter D, right? So 48 is actually 16 times three. So since um, if I'm doing the fourth root of 16 times three, that is a two. <coughs> Excuse me. So two comes out and three stays in. There's already a negative three waiting for my two outside. So I get negative six, leave some space, fourth root, three. All right. Four goes into 11 twice with three left over, and same thing for the B. So B2 and three left over. And there I have it. All right, so down here, these are some problems that you're going to see every once in a while. They, they're multiplication problems, but, um, you know, they're just with uh, no variables. So make sure you realize a simple fact. When you're multiplying two square roots that are exactly the same, um, it basically like pops out, right? Square root of six times square root of six is square root of 36 if I multiply them together. And the square root of 36 is six. So, you know, you don't do all that work. When you see radical six times radical six, be like, oh, bam, it's, you know, six. Because also what it's doing is this. It's basically saying the square root of six squared, right? That's what this means also. And these knock each other out. So however you like to think of it, just know, you know, six pops out. So when I see this problem right here, I'm like, oh, that five stays, but three pops out. So five times three is 15. And it'll just be a lot faster for you in the long run. All right, so here, this is distributive property. I'm gonna multiply this and there. Now remember, there's a one in front of here. So when I multiply these, um, the one is gonna multiply by the four, and that makes four, but the radical two has nothing to change it, nothing to go with, so he just kind of stays there. It's kind of like doing, you know, x times four, it's four x. So radical two times four is four radical two. All right, so the next part, I get one times three, so it's minus three, but then radical two times radical two, that pops out a two. So what I really have right here is four radical two minus six. And you just leave it like that, no calculator, no decimal answers. All right, so this times this, this two and seven multiply 14, and I get radical two following along. And here times here, I get a six out front, and radical two times radical five is radical 10. Now radical 10 can't be reduced, neither can radical two, so I'm just finished. So this one, hopefully this reminds you of a uh, foil like we did with binomials before. So I'm gonna do four times five, 20. Four times here makes 16 radical two. Here, um, this two times five makes 10 with a radical two. And then here, I get two times four, which is eight in front, and the radical two times radical two pops out of two, so it multiplies by two. So clean this up. I got 20 plus, these come together, that's 26 radical twos on the end is 16. So my final answer is 36 plus 26 radical 2.